Greenland is the most widely used old school client in the game, and there's a ton of plugins that you can use for this. Just open up the plugin menu and scroll, and you can see that there's a ton of different things that you can put into this. And the RuneLight team is also releasing new content. It seems to be almost weekly. So you might be wondering to yourself, where do I start? And what are some of these plugins? And how do some of them work? Well, in this video, I'll be going through some of the plugins that I think are very beneficial that you should at least know how to use and then use those to your discretion if you want to use them to improve your gameplay or not. Some of you may be new to RuneLight. Some of you may have used RuneLight since its existence. Either way, hopefully you learned something from this video, and in the comment section, let me know what is your favorite RuneLight plugin. I'm curious to see what the top rated comment will be. Also, if you guys are looking for a CC to hang out in, or you have questions about any of the RuneLight plugins I go over in this video, just hop in mine. It's my name. I'll have it on the screen. You can hop in there. We have a pretty cool group of people. I like to help people out. If you have any questions, just hop in there and ask any of us. All right, y'all. Let's get into this. Starting off with bank tags. Bank tags are great in that they offer another level of organization to your bank, allowing you to be able to further sort things in your bank without messing up the ordering that you already have for them with your tabs. This is generally used more for bossing since you have certain setups and inventory items that you have for different bosses, and being able to keep them all in one centralized location decreases banking time and allows you to make sure that you have everything you need for the boss before you leave. You can also utilize these for other things like clue scrolls, different skilling activities, birdhouse runs, etc. Anything where you need to make sure you have certain things for any activity. How to use them is you either click on the addition sign in the top left of the bank and then type the tag name that you want. Then drag and drop different items that you want in that tag to tag them. Or you can right click on the item in your bank and type out the name of the tag that you want to add to them. You can also import different bank tags using the item IDs. This is much more complex and I'm not very well versed in it because it's not necessary, so I won't get into the detail of how to make it. But the Gear Discord, which I'll have linked in the description, has a list of pre-made bank tags for all sorts of different bosses, and all you need to do is copy the tag, then right click on the plus sign and click import bank tag, and RuneLay will automatically generate the tag for you as well as implement any kind of placeholders that you need. Something else that you can also do, which is kind of a cosmetic thing, is you can right click on the tab once the tab has already been made, or the tag, and then you can change the picture of it by clicking on change icon, and then you can click on any item in your bank to change the icon of that tag to that icon. The Camera Zoom plugin. A very simple plugin, but it allows you to be able to zoom out much further than the vanilla client allows you to, which combined with the GPU plugin allows for a huge quality of life increase. It allows you to increase the distance you can zoom into your character as well. So when doing skills like Hunter, where you need to click on a specific tile, but not click on the object on that tile, this aids in making that much easier. It also allows you to have a complete top-down view of your character. I haven't found a lot of uses for this, but it's nice to have available to you. How to use this is simple. You simply turn it on and then you scroll either out or in to increase or decrease your zoom. If you have the box checked that says you need to have a key pressed in order to increase your zoom, then press that key and go ahead and zoom. I don't have this because I find no need for it, but if you find some need that you want to have a key press behind your camera zoom, then be my guest. The Chambers of Zarek plugin. This doesn't necessarily help you a whole lot with the execution of the raid, killing things like Ulm, Tecton, Vespula, things like that, it doesn't do for you, it doesn't aid you in that, but what it does do is it heavily increases the ease of actually scouting out a raid, because what you, the client allows you to do, what the plugin allows you to do, is you can whitelist or blacklist certain activities, basically just by typing them in. And then what happens is when you enter the raid, a box will pop up saying exactly what's inside that raid, and if something is blacklisted in that raid, it will be marked red. If it's whitelisted in the raid, it will be marked green. This makes it very easy for you to be able to see what's coming up in that raid, and it's very easy to see if you want to be doing that raid because it has, you know, two things you like and it doesn't have anything that you have blacklisted. So the Chambers of Zarek plugin is very good for helping scouting, which, again, scouting normally would take like 30 seconds if you didn't have the plugin to look at the map and then figure out what the rooms are. So with the plugin, it definitely shaves off a ton of time with being able to just pop in, pop out, find what raid you want. But again, if you're looking for something to help you with the execution of the raid, this is not it. Serb and Demonic Gorillas. Both similar to each other, but slightly different. With Cerberus, it will tell you which attack style the three ghosts do when they spawn, so you don't have to identify which ghost is doing what. You just have to look at the little pop-up box to tell you what is going to be used and then pray accordingly. Demonic Gorillas are slightly more complex. The plugin will narrow down which attack style they are going to use, as well as track how many attacks the Demonic Gorilla has done of that style so you know when you need to be ready to switch prayers. 
Both of these cut out a lot of some of the thinking behind the monsters, so it helps alleviate some of that pressure when you first start doing these bosses or monsters, or when you've done it a few times, it really helps it just make a brain dead boss. The GPU plugin. Probably one of the most useful plugins that Runelight has to offer as it will increase the draw distance of the game so you can see much further in the game. Now this doesn't make all those trees and doors interactable, but you can click on the ground to move those locations. So in instances where you need to run a far distance like Zaya runecrafting, birdhouses, or just you know traveling for quests in general, it helps to increase the amount of time you can run without having to click again. This plugin does require a good amount of CPU usage, so if your computer can't operate well at increased draw distances, I have a plugin that will help you out later, but keep in mind that you can increase the draw distance as much as you want, so play around with it to figure out what works best for your PC. To increase the draw distance, all you do is open up the GPU plugin and then click the little plus or the little up arrow and it will increase the draw distance by one and then just play around with it and see what actually works the best for your computer setup. Ground markers. Ground markers are great in that they allow you to mark certain tiles on the ground to help you remember different locations you need to stand. Mostly used for bossing when trying to position, but also useful when doing skills that require you to do certain actions on particular tiles. Look at my fire making fletching video or when I was doing blast furnace on my Road to Max series for examples of this. To do this, simply hold shift and then right click on the tile that you want to mark. Then click mark tile and Runelight will mark that tile for you and remember that marked tile until you right click it and click mark tile again to remove the marking. There's a lot of marks in that sentence, I apologize. You can also change the color of the tile markings and then tell Runelight to remember what color was used when you marked it. So you can use this to mark what tiles you need to stand for. Let's say you need to mark where you stand when you melee, you need to mark where you stand for ranging or maging. You can color code these by making one green and then marking it and then making one red and then marking it. And as long as you've told Runelight to make sure to remember this, what color it was when it was marked, Runelight will keep that color intact when you mark it so that way you know it for future reference. Inventory tags. This plugin allows you to outline different items in your inventory different colors. This shows you what the click box is for different items in your inventory, but another use for this is to outline different gear setups different colors so it's easy to see when you're switching when you've messed up a switch or not. People will mark their setups so when they switch to a different gear, it is very easy to identify which gear was not hit in the switch and allows them to quickly put on that piece of gear to fix a switch. There's another plugin later on that I will discuss that can assist with this because personally I don't use these because I just don't like how they look. It just looks kind of disgusting to me, but everyone has their own likes and dislikes, so try it out if you want, and who knows, maybe you just might like it. To use it, once you've turned on the inventory tags plugin, all you'll do is right click on your inventory icon, you'll click configure inventory tags, and then right click on the items in your inventory and click which grouping that you want to mark them in. You can change the colors in the plugin setup, and then once you've done that, you can right click on the inventory button again, click save inventory tags, and then there you go. It will be saved and it'll be ready for your use. Karen library. This plugin straight up breaks the Karen library, it feels. Initially designed by Wooks, this plugin will tell you exactly where every book in the library is once you have found two books. The locations of these books will change every 60 to 90 minutes, so you will need to refine two books in order to get those locations again. But this plugin is helpful when trying to find books like the Teleport Incantation book to get the Karen Teleport, or the Journey of Souls, Soul Journey, to get the Soul Bearer. This can be also used to get upwards of 73,000 runecrafting experience per hour at level 99. There's a video link to that in the description. To use this plugin, simply turn it on and go and find two books in the library by searching bookshelves. Once you've done that, all the books will be listed above the bookshelf they are located in alongside the name associated with that book. And again, these will change every 60 to 90 minutes. NPC Aggression Timer What it basically does is any NPC that is aggressive by default, the plugin will show you how long you have until that NPC is no longer aggressive. This is great for training at things like sand crabs, rock crabs, flesh crawlers, etc. But it's also great for things like Camping Gargoyles, where you want to know how long you have until the monster is no longer aggressive. The plugin will also show you where you need to run in order to reset the aggro of those monsters. To use this, you can type in the name of the NPCs that you are wanting to know the aggression timer for, enable the timer and area lines, and the game will take care of the rest. So for me, for my alt, I would type in Gargoyles for the NPC I was curious about, turn on the timer, turn on the draw lines, and then the game will just take care of the rest for me. Another option is to have this as always being on, but I don't find too much use for this, and it kind of drives me up the wall, so I choose to not always have it on. The Runelight tab. 
The actual rune light section of the plugin tab has a lot of different options when it comes to setting up your notifications in rune light, or just the overall look of your rune light. You have options to make your client to always be on top, have a notifi flash notification for when you idle in the game, enable sounds for your notifications, etc. This is a very customizable tab, there's no right way to set it up, it's just whatever works the best for you. Shift Anti-Drag. My absolute favorite plugin is Shift Anti-Drag. What this plugin does is it puts a delay on how long you need to move an item for while holding down the Shift key to actually move the item. If you have ever fletched darts or done Zaya room crafting, you know how frustrating it can be when you accidentally switch the position of the items in your inventory and miss a click. With this plugin, you hold down the Shift button and the items will take longer to be moved around allowing you to hit the clicks more frequently. You can also utilize this whenever you need to switch gear because when holding it down, you won't switch the spot of the gear in the inventory, which tends to be why most people end up missing their switches is just because they hold down their click too long and end up dragging it instead of just actually clicking it. So if you're doing something that doesn't require you to shift drop things like fletching darts or combat or Zayabrin crafting, these things don't require you to shift drop things like Barbarian fishing, for example, would require you to shift drop. Consider turning actually off shift drop on the OSRS client and utilize this plugin to your advantage. It has saved me a lot of heartache when it came to fletching darts or switching gear, and I would highly recommend you at least try it out and see how it works for you. And finally, the WASD camera plugin. This plugin enables the press enter to chat feature that you see in my chat box in the Road to Max videos. This is nice when doing skills that require you to hold down a button on the keyboard so that you don't needlessly fill up the chat box with nonsense that you don't want to type normally, things like ones and spaces. It also enables you to have your hands in a more normal position on the keyboard with having your left hand actually on the left side of the keyboard instead of having to rest it on the arrow keys. Now you can still use the arrow keys to move your camera around while having this plugin on, but again, it allows you the opportunity to use the WASD keys to move the camera instead of just the arrow keys. This one is really simple. All you do is go to the plugin, turn on WASD camera, and there you go. Not a whole lot else to really delve into there. All right, guys, this is going to do it for this video. Those are some of the plugins that I think are very beneficial to use and you should be using if you don't already know about them. Obviously, there are still some other ones like the Tears of Gothics plugin or the Timers plugin or the Canon t plugin. There's a lot of other plugins with RuneLight, but a lot more of them are kind of very self-explanatory. There's not a whole lot that goes into it. So in this video, I kind of wanted to touch on the ones that require a little bit more thought to actually use. So hopefully you guys found some use in this video. If you did, remember to give it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And remember that all my socials are in the description as well. Have a great morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time of day it is, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.